Hello folks, welcome back. This is episode 13 of Ginger Lions Modded Minecraft Let's Play. So, last time I was hanging out with my Ender Quarry, and that got me a pretty good collection of resources. Not quite as much as my previous quarry had, but still quite a lot. Um, and I decided that I was going to use those resources to upgrade a couple of things at my base. So, first I made a pulverizer. We've seen those before, up there. Um, and then I made a new device called an induction smelter. Um, the induction smelter recipe is very similar to most of the rest of the machines in the um, in the industrial craft uh, thermal expansion pack. A machine frame, a reception coil, in this case some invar ingots, nothing significant. However, this is a little different in what it can do. Um, one of the nice things about all of the thermal expansion items is if you click on this arrow in the middle of them, they tell you what you can do with them once you've put them down. In this case, one of the things that it can do is if you pulverize some obsidian and put some lead here, you can make hardened glass. You can also make lots of other interesting things. For example, um, if you're trying to make yourself um, any of the combined ore ingots, um, for example, let's see, here, electrum, silver and gold. Just put the ingots in and get the electrum out. You don't have to go through any of the complicated processes. Um, of melting things down and refining things. You can also, and I find this one extremely interesting, it takes a lot of energy, clearly, but if you put iron and pulverized coal or coal dust in here, you can get yourself railcraft steel without having to go through the entire process on railcraft, which is very nice. Um, I have a lot of iron, and I believe right over here, I have quite a lot of coal. I'm probably about to do that. However, what I did do was make myself a lot of hardened glass, some invar, and I turned most of my gold into electrum. Now, why would I do such a thing? Well, I'm about to make a, a major increase in the way that my power is handled here at the base. Um, now, we've already seen plenty of the um, hardened energy conduits, the ones that transfer 400. But what I did is I went ahead and made some of these redstone energy conduits that make 10,000. Per, that allow us to transfer 10,000. So the recipe for that involves making this f first and using this thing called a fluid transposer to transfer redstone into it. Well, what you need is a device called a magma crucible, which anything you put here will melt it into a liquid, and then you set it to output over here to the fluid transposer. As you see, I have a whole bunch of destabilized redstone in here, because I'm about to do something else. Uh, since I've already made a bunch of these conduit, what I'm going to end up doing is replacing all these conduit with it, which means I'm going to run out of this very soon. But that's okay. Um, one of the things that I badly want is something to store some energy, so that when I make energy here in the base, that I can make a bunch of it and store it, should, for example, I have lava problems. When I run out of lava, I can go and change things over in the nether and still have my base continue to function. That's what these energy cells are designed to do. The basic one, the leadstone one, the one that I've been attaching to my tools, holds 40,000 redstone flux and it can send and receive 80 a tick. Remember, 80 is how much any one of these engines make. So, um, the hardened energy cells, which have been within my reach, send and receive 400 a tick. That's, you know, right in line with the conduits that I've been using, but it only holds 2 million redstone flux, and that didn't seem like it was worth the effort to me, given that I had a pretty steady supply of energy. But now, these... Redstone energy cells are within my reach, and they're the high, the second highest tier. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make them into resonant, but let me point these out to you. These send and receive 20,000 redstone flux of ticks, which is short of the te sorry, 2,000, which is short of the 10,000 that these transfer. So they're going to slow up my system a little bit, but I don't actually expect to go above 2,000 anytime soon. And they hold a charge of 10 million now. They can be used, let me hit you, they can be used with some resonant endear some enderium ingots to make the highest tier, which means making these is not a bad idea because I can always upgrade them later 
Now, I don't know if I can make this endurium. Its process is kind of complicated, if I recall correctly. It involves making some unusual dusts. I will check that out after I do this, but I want these in place right now. So, let me make some. I would actually like to make two of them. So let's see. First, I need this item. I don't have any diamonds on me, so I'm going to go upstairs and get some. I think I have all... Let me get some more redstone, just in case it turns out that that's what's necessary. I'd l hate to have to come back down here just because I forgot an item. Hey, right. Oop. Wrong direction. There we go. Now, I think my diamonds are in here. And I only need to make two of these. So, let's go ahead and find the recipe again, and shift question mark. That's two. That's good. Now, if I'm correct, the only use for these is to put them in the fluid transposer and fill them with redstone. And I believe I have exactly the right amount of redstone already melted. Let's find out. Let's put these two in. Now this, because it's transferring so much, it's going to do it very slowly. But if you look at the power usage, it's definitely using 40 redstone flux a tick, which means that it's operating. And of course, this bar is now expanding, and that makes that visible too. Here's the first one. Now, what do I do to this? Well, I need a redstone conductance coil, some lead ingots, and some electrum ingots. I have the lead. I might as well try to make that coil while the second one fills. So let's see. Uses, recipe, bang. I need two. Nothing complicated. There we are. That's that. Uh, and while I'm at it, why don't I lay out the recipe? Well, I'll just go get this. I think it's there. It's done right now. Perfect. Use, shift question mark, there they are. That's two of them. Now, they're both empty. Let's see if we can upgrade them. See if I have the things that I need. A uh, recipe. So I need enderium ingots. To make enderium ingots, I need pyrothium dust and two enderium blend. That makes two of them. And how many do I need? I need eight. So let's see. Recipe. And just let's see if I can make the enderium blend. Shiny pulverized metal, tin dust. I definitely have these things. And I, th how do I make resident ender? Oh, I just melt ender. Okay. Um. So let's go see about this. Might as well upgrade it f all the way if I'm capable of it. I think that if I have any shiny metal, it'll be in here. So let's do this. Shiny. Okay, there's none in there. But let me look in all the rest of the chests, just to make sure. It wouldn't surprise me if I had no shiny metal at this point. It's kind of a specialized thing to make. Um, and I haven't been doing the processes that would produce me shiny metal. But to assume that I don't have any, it's a bad idea. No shiny metal. So now, let's find out how do I get shiny metal. It's made, predictably enough, by smelting... Let me turn this off. By smelting pulverized shiny metal. Well, how do I get that? It looks like I get that out of ferrous ore on a rare occasion. Let's see if there's any other circumstances that get me pulverized shiny metal. Platinum grains from extra bees. Nope, that's about it. Let's see if I have any ferrous ore around here. I don't think I do. Ferrous ore. I think I may have used that all up in my most recent processes, and if so, that's unfortunate, because now I have a tool that will allow me to make shiny metal out of it. There's 51 ferrous ore. And there's some ferrous ingots, so I definitely have been processing some. I need to go downstairs and make sure that I'm not feeding it into my tools downstairs. So, just a moment. First, I'm going to go check on that, and then I'm going to figure out how to make shiny metal out of that so that I can upgrade these. 
little bit by little bit, I figure out how these processes work. Um, don't assume that I know everything about how any of these mods work. This is just me experimenting and trying to figure things out. So, or dick, am I? No, I am not sending my ferrous metal. Let's just make sure. What's it called? It would be called nickel, and it's not in the list. Good. So now, what are the uses for ferrous metal? That makes shiny. Okay, I get 10% chance if I pulverize it. If I use it in the induction smelter with this cinnabar stuff, I'm guaranteed to get one. That would be nice. So how would I go about that? How do I make this cinnabar stuff? Uh, no, not uses. Recipe. If I pulverize redstone, ah... Or if I fluid transpose... <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. This this stuff is made by hunting down a monster, very much like the Blaze, and getting its frozen version of the Blaze rods. I do have plenty of cinnabar ore, um, but this, this would be kind of a painful process. So I guess my choices are to make a Silk Touch pickaxe and go mine some um, redstone. Um... Which I could do, but I'm not going to right now. Um, or hunt down some of these blizzes to make blizz powder. So, neither of those are going to happen in the next day. Hunting down blizzes I've done before, and it's not impossible, but they're not the most fun. So, I'd like to show you what, having made some of the full range conduits, and now full of changing my power system over, I've done. This is down on 41. And that, my friends, is a stack of magmatic dynamos, all connected to redstone energy conduits. Now, I could have done this before. I had all of the resources, except I didn't have these conduits. So I couldn't transfer the energy at an acceptable rate. So there was no point in making a huge amount of devices if I couldn't transfer the energy. So what I would like to do is place one of these down right here. And then I'm going to configure it. I would like all of the sides to be off, except that. Now, I'm receiving as many flux as this can handle, I think it's actually, since the numbers are occurring with three zeros to the end of it, I think I'm producing as much power as this device can produce. So, I'm using all of these engines at their maximum capacity, um, or I'm using this device at its maximum capacity, more precisely, willing to bet I'm generating more power than I can actually transmit. Um, and because I like having a really big buffer in between, I'm going to put this here. Now, if I'm correct, no, nope, it's definitely not accepting input. There, now it's accepting input, and I would like it to, if I'm correct, that's the top. There. Now, what I've done, effectively, is set up a buffer in between of how many redstone flux? Just a moment. Two million redstone flux, which isn't as much as if I'd been able to upgrade these, which I will at some point. That would have been a hundred million, but, sorry, 20 million is a perfectly acceptable number. Now, I'm going to put this block in place. Now, I can disassemble all of these. That's going to mean that all my equipment loses power for just a moment, but that's fine, given the circumstances. So, what I'm going to do is... I can also disassemble this collection of pipes. So, I think I'm going to put this one back, because I'm using it. Just a moment, I'll show you why. Now, this... These two will not connect to each other. They're completely different generations of power, and I can't connect to them. However, I can do that. And I think I'm going to mine directly into the wall and go straight up to 
there. That'll be much faster and use less conduits than I had to use last time. Now, I hope I have enough conduits to do what I'm about to do. Otherwise, I'm going to be a sad puffy and have to go make some more. I might not. We shall see. I'm going to put this here, and that'll connect up to our sorting network. There, that's powered. That's good. Five, four, three. Um, I might have enough. Let's find out. Four, three, two. If I'm correct, this, what is this? Here. This is the energetic infuser that I use to recharge my tools. And I believe it's the end of the line. It is. And I have one left over. Ah, so, now... I have produced enough energy that I should be able to charge everything, and everything in my line should stay full all the time. I now have more power than I can possibly use in my system. That's great. And I have some buffers sitting in the way that this one, as you can see, is most of the way full. After it fills up, the one below it will fill up, and then all the dynamos will slow down. I can go downstairs now and add these dynamos that I just took out to this. There's no reason not to have them there, especially since I'll be upgrading my system relatively soon. As soon as I can find those blizzes in some snow biome somewhere and kill enough of them that I can collect some, um, some of those blizz rods to grind them down. So as you can see, this has stopped, because it's inputting and outputting just as fast as it possibly can, which is 2,000 red tone flux a tick. Um, as soon as the one above it finishes filling, it will begin filling at 2,000 a tick. All of these engines are now connected, all of them are full of lava, and all of them are available to produce power. I have one bottleneck in the system, which are those two... Um, energy storage devices, which is why I'd like to upgrade them soon, um, but I know that I'm at least getting 2,000 redstone flux a tick out of all these energy conduits. So, there, I have now upgraded my base's energy production significantly, and it's time for me to consider what I can do with all of that power. Let me think on that for a little bit, and I'll be right back. So, I guess I am a little bit obsessive about these things. Um, so here I am, out in the middle of a snow biome, looking for blizzes. But I don't know when blizzes spawn, day or night. I don't know... I don't know most things that I would love to know about blizzes. So, I don't need those right now. Um, so what I've done is I'm spending the day chopping down trees, hoping that they might spawn during the day, but kind of doubting it, um, and s creating a big, large, open, flat area in a snow biome. I know that they spawn in snow biomes, um, and I know that I want to tackle them from the air, because that'll be a lot easier, and I'm a little bit of a coward when it comes to these things. Um, and so, for me, the easiest thing would be if I could see the ground from the air, but unfortunately, there's all these trees in the way. So, I decided to pull my powered axe out of my chest, out of my, my portable hole, my um, ender chest, uh, ender uh, bag, um, and use it to chop down trees, because after all, trees and saplings are good things to have. So anyway, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to be out here for a while, um, and as soon as I see my first blizz, 
I'm going to pop the recording on so you guys can watch me hunt something that I consider moderately dangerous. The few times I've tangled with them, I've been as well or better equipped than I am right now for it. Uh, I know that they throw snowballs, I know that they slow me down, I know that they fly too. Uh, I know basically that they are a very dangerous thing to tangle with. That's why I'm spending the day clearing out this space so that I can see them from long range and react as opposed to being trapped in between all of these trees while trying to deal with something scary. So there you go. I will be back as soon as I see my first blizz, and you guys should be able to see at least the first one. If that goes well, I will probably stay out for a lot longer, especially now that I've set up my bag so that every time that I reach in to grab a little bit of bread, there'll be some there. So I have food for as long as I want, and at least until my tools run out of power, I have great equipment. So yeah, um, here's to hoping that sometime tonight I get myself some blizzes. Okay, folks, well, I have not yet found a blizz. However, I did run into an Ars Magica 2 Earth Elemental. And I don't know what it's going to drop. I have no clue. I've never dealt with one before. But I decided that I was going to kill it, and I was going to kill it on camera. So, there you are. Let's see if it gave me anything interesting. Well, if it did, it's nothing separate from what other mobs get. So, I'll be back if I manage to find a blizz. Hi again, folks. So, I decided that it was the fact that I was in a taiga biome and not a tundra. So now I'm hunting for a tundra. In the process, I came across this, which is one of these wonderful, I think it's a sacred springs, with these gigantic oak trees. Now, this is the first time that I've been next to one of these with this axe, so I'm going to find out what it does here. I may just be flooded in wood, or it may just decide this isn't really a tree and only give me a little piece of it. Eh, it looks like it only gave me a piece of it. That's too bad. Hoping for something really dramatic. Okay, folks, back to my searching. Okay, folks, I'm still exploring, but... In the process, I came back to the neighborhood where my quarry is operating, and I wanted to let you guys see what it looks like when one of these ender quarries has converted an area that otherwise was desert. And if you look on the map, it's still listed as a desert biome, and fills it in with sand, uh, with uh, dirt blocks and grass on the top. Just thought you guys might find that interesting. I'm going to go back to searching... I know many of you have spent a lot of time admiring terrain in Minecraft, but I just wanted to point out this set of mountains that I had just come across, and I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Carved and steep and lots and lots of floating terrain, which I always find to be a lot of fun. Um, of course, they're covered in monsters, and not ones that I want to kill right now. But yeah, I wanted you to see this. And hey, look, sunrise over the mountains. <sighs> another day spent out. Another day spent searching. One of these days, I'll find those things. Hello, folks. So, my roommates had come back by the point that I did finally find a blizz. Um, and so I had to record it with the voice off. So I'm going to voice over this afterwards. Here we are. The blizz shows up in the distance. Um, I get hit by a, a snowball on the way trying to get him. Um, come over um, and kill my first blizz. What I had had to do, or what I did, um, that I think caused him to spawn, was switching over to hard mode, because relatively soon thereafter, I got several more blizzes. I don't have video of that, but um, I did kill quite a bunch of them, and because I have looting on my sword, I got quite a bunch more blizz rods from killing them. Um, after this, I head back to my base, uh, and we're about to go through a slideshow of that, because again, I had to take pictures, because my roommates were home. 
I got back, converted all of the rods that I had into powder, um, and there's what I got. Um, I tossed them in the magma crucible and smelted them down, which, as you see, filled up on the right-hand side. I brought down some cinnabar ore, um, which, because when you pour cinnabar ore in here, what you get out of it is those cinnabar, um, uh, I guess you would call them slag, placed in the induction smelter with um, ferrous ore. Those get you shiny metal ingots as a byproduct. I also learned a new trick while I was wandering around that in this mod pack, I'm not sure which mod added this, but if you um, place uh, the meat, that, the rotten meat that you get from uh, zombies into a furnace, you can get leather out of it. So well, I grabbed all of it, and while I was downstairs making shiny metal, I made myself a whole bunch of leather as well. So as you can see, the final result of that was 53 shiny metal, which is good because that up till then I had none. Now, I um, tossed that in the pulverizer along with some lead. Um, I think it was lead. Uh, melted up some resonant ender. Um, and you'll notice that it wouldn't leave the magma crucible because I had some gelid cryrothium left in there, but not enough to actually use. So I had to go and break it and replace it, and then the resident ender flowed out like I wanted it to. Made myself some buckets of resident ender, came over here and made the recipe for um, the, the enderium dust, then I had to make up some pyrothium dust, which the recipe is there, so I pulverized some coal, made up some pyrothium dust, um, smelted those in the induction smelter, and made myself the eight enderium ingots that I needed. So then I broke the two um, energy storage things that I had, made myself both resonant energy cells, um, placed them in place. You'll notice the max input is uh, 20,000. That's the same... Um, it's actually twice as much as you can transfer, um, and there you are. There's my final, uh, installation over in the corner. Each one of those will hold, um, uh, 50 million redstone flux, um, which will mean that even if I run out of lava, I still have probably several days worth of base operation, uh, before they're done. There we go, folks. That's the end of the episode, and I'll catch you next time, and then I'll actually be able to record live again.